All right, the Dynasty dropped its first two episodes this past Friday, with the first one focusing on the quarterback change from Drew Bledsoe to Tom Brady. In the final scene of that episode, Robert Kraft had a very interesting quote. It stood out to me like crazy. This is how the first episode ended with this line from the Patriots owner. After the Patriots lost to the Rams in week 10, to even the record at 5-5, five and five, Kraft said, watching that game, I felt Bill had let us down. I had people on my case about how bad my judgment was for not starting a guy like Drew Bledsoe. Bill and I, we were under pressure. And the decisions that we were about to make were going to determine the future of football in New England for the next 20 years. Oh. Boom! Period, paragraph. The episode ended. And I sat there and went, Bill and I? We? Like, uh, John Tomasi, we'll start with you. That one really stood out to me. Oh, for sure. And, and it's like, it's kind of the overarching thing. I'm going to ask you guys if you've ever heard of these names. Do you know who Dan Topping and Del Webb are? Do you know either of those no. names? They owned the Yankees no. when they were in the midst of their dynasty and won 10 World Series in like 15 years. We have no idea who they are. Do you know why? Because it was about Mickey Mantle and Joe DiMaggio and, you know, Casey State, whoever. And you look at the Celtics. It was about Russell and Auerbach. And now here we are with the Patriots, and they're the one team – it's got to somehow be about the owner, too. That's my biggest problem with this whole project. That's my biggest problem with Brady versus Bill. It's how Kraft, I, it was, I did everything I could to keep them together. It's like, dude, you have the money. That's great. But it's not about you. It's about everybody else. And this quote is just further proof of how he can't accept that and the family can't accept that. But I would say, uh, in all fairness, uh, you know, we don't know the uh, – in, in most baseball ownership groups, uh, it, especially back in the day, you're not really thinking of, hey, who owned that team? But with the Red Sox now, think about it. When we say, hey, they won their four championships, we do mention John Henry as being a part of it. In the NFL today – the owner is ownership is a part of the story, but I do I have a problem with his quote here, uh, Tomasi and Felger. I got, a, I got a problem with it because he in the same episode, he says Bill screwed us. Okay, so you can't say Bill screwed us. I wanted Bledsoe, and then come in and, and take credit for Tom Brady. You thought Bill was wrong. You you wanted Bledsoe to be the quarterback, and you even said Felger tripped me out. He said, Hey. Drew, he doesn't want you to start. I can't tell him what to do, but I can hold him accountable for if he makes a bad decision. I feel like I've done that so, to this point. So it's, it's clear. Like, he wasn't I, a visionary. I feel uh, from, you know, down there, it just feels everyone wanting it both ways and everyone wanting credit where maybe they should get it, maybe they shouldn't, but they're just so needy for it. And Robert is not the only one. You know, Bill Belichick. If people say, well, that was all about Brady and those win, you know, winning was all about the quarterback. Let's see, no, it's not about the quarterback. Football's more than just the quarterback. It's about team and system and bringing it all together. But then when you ask Bill what went wrong the last four years, you know what he'll say? It was the quarterback. You know, you ask him what went wrong in Cleveland. <laughs> right, right. It was Bernie Kosar. Right, so, you know, right. like when they're winning, it's the team and the system and the coaching and everything bring it together. When they're losing, it's a quarterback. So I, I feel like a lot of that's gone on down there uh, the last several years. But it ties into what, you know, the, my one nitpick. I, first of all, the first two episodes I loved. I think it's extremely well done. It's compelling. Uh, I'm taking them two at a time, but I was tempted to keep going because it was so good. So, like, I, I liked the thing. But I think they are definitely overplaying the inflection point of that Rams game and where they were when Bledsoe got healthy again. By that point, by the Ram game, they were five and two under Tom Brady after going seven of seven and nineteen the previous twenty six with Drew Bledsoe. We looked this up today in the two plus seasons leading into Brady taking over the two full seasons ninety nine two thousand and then the two games. Bledsoe had thrown thirty eight touchdowns. 36 interceptions and had been sacked 105 times fans and media were ready for a change. They were sick to death of looking at drew Bledsoe, And so this, this, this special is portraying it like the fans were against this Brady move. The media was against Belichick. The pressure was on Kraft. The well, pressure was on Belichick. Everyone wanted to stick with Bledsoe. 
And it just wasn't, it just wasn't the case. What? There were some was... Globe guys who were big supporters of Bledsoe. Okay. There were we big go. guys in the media who were supportive of Brady. The fans wanted change. They they totally overstated that. Oh, but I, no, I would say, no, I would say it was a split. I remember an interview you did. Uh, I remember sports final back in the day where Ron Board just wouldn't even call your name. He kept saying the gentleman to my left. And, and then <laughs> LaBelle, LaBelle stepped in and said, his, excuse me, his name is Michael Felger. That doesn't sound you know, like Borges at all. Know, like, but he was, he was firmly a Bledsoe guy. There were a lot of Bledsoe guys in the media, and they showed that clip of sports final again with Shaughnessy and Ryan and Steve Burton. And they're like, hey, come on, Bob. We know what's going to happen. When Bledsoe comes back, he's going to take the job. There was a feeling there. Now, let's say 60% of the Mike, fans— it was a debate. Mike, right. it, Mike, it was a debate. But the special portrays it as it was Bernie Kosar all over again, and the entire well, city not, was against Belichick. Yeah, that's too far. And you no, know it wasn't like no, that. I, no, I don't think it was like that. I think it was a good—I think it was a campaign. I think, you know, t Tom Brady winning, you know, 60%— uh, 60 percent of, of the populace and Drew Bledsoe coming in at 40 percent. I, I mean, I think it was competitive, but it was nothing like Bernie Kosar and, hey, you know, you, you saw that stuff. They're like hanging Bill Belichick and effigy and all kinds of stuff. And like the, the crazy guy from Cleveland saying, I'm going to hunt him down. I'm going to hunt him the rest of his life. He'll never be able to escape me. It wasn't like that. I mean, listen, I was a exactly. fan back then. I was just a regular fan. And I can tell you what I remember. It was you almost beat the greatest show on turf. That was one of the best teams, the, the, maybe the best team in the NFL. And by the end of that game, Patriots fans are looking at themselves like, we kind of kicked their ass that game. Like, by the end of it, it was physical, and it was really the blueprint for how they won. So I distinctly remember, you didn't come out of that game saying, oh, if Bledsoe had just played, they would have won. No one was saying that. They were 0-2 to start the year, and then 5-2 and two with Brady. Like, come on, it's totally overplayed.